The Viking Longship, crafted by the skilled hands of master shipwrights, with no written blueprints or standard written design plans to be found. The perfect mating of design, structure, and material did not come from a lone creative prodigy, nor from a singular moment in time. Instead, these vessels served as the tangible representation of Norse seafaring aspirations and the culmination of more than 6,000 years of technical progression. The shape of boats must depend a great deal upon the personality of the men who build and use them. The longship draws upon the ferocious spirit of their creators, drawing upon their speed, agility, and adaptability to the world around them to become the pinnacle of naval ingenuity of their time. The North Atlantic's coastline is a fickle, unyielding lover, stretching from Norway's jagged fjords to Shetland's sandy alcoves and Iceland's volcanic shores. And the Norse people, forged by their encounters with these myriad landscapes, adapted to the capricious whims of the sea. From the 8th to the 11th centuries, their raiding successes across diverse shores and waterways necessitated the creation of swift, menacing ships that could exploit shallow waters and maintain a pervasive air of unpredictability while forging expansive trade networks. The awe-inspiring clinker-style masterpieces sliced through the horizon, equipped with at least 13 pairs of oars, a solitary mast, and shield racks for protection. Their defining features, a double-ended shape, a central keel flanked by symmetrical curved stems, overlapping strakes, and an interior timber structure with evenly spaced floor timbers. Craftsmen would begin with a central keel, carefully overlapping planks and securing them with rivets. As floor timbers were inserted and fastened to the planking, ribs and knees lent unwavering support. When envisioning European sailing ships, we imagine wide vessels with towering superstructures, high freeboards, deep holds, round bilges, and deep drafts. The Vikings, however, took a different tack. The Gnar, with its roughly 50-foot hull and 24-ton carrying capacity, already served their trading needs. But to expand their territories as their population, and perhaps most importantly their swelling ambitions, the Vikings required their legendary longship. General characteristics started with the varying sizes, the 26-oared Carvey, the Snekja with 40 to 56 oars, and the Skade or Drakar, the so-called dragons, brandishing even more oars. These double-ended vessels were nimble, capable of reversing direction swiftly, navigating shallow waters, landing on beaches, and even being carried over portages. The unmatched lightness of longships augmented hydrodynamic lift, especially as speed builds. By shifting the mast ever so slightly forward of the midpoint, the lift of the entire vessel is even further enhanced. The ancient seafarers so tirelessly pursued weightlessness that they carved away excess wood until planking was a mere two centimeters thick, no wider than a finger's breadth, bestowing upon them numerous tactical advantages. For instance, in tranquil weather and gentle breezes, rowing became their secret weapon. Lighter ships were easier to propel by manpower alone, though square-rigged longships couldn't sail closer than 60, 70 degrees to the wind, their astonishing prowess in rowing against the wind at speeds of three to four knots compensated for this limitation. With the wind at their backs, longships' light and shallow hulls would semi-plane, skimming the water's surface, reducing resistance, and accelerating just short of total abandon. These nimble ships with their sleek forms gave Vikings the remarkable ability to be able to run aground, heave the hulls out of the water, and safe from the ravages of merciless storms and the gnawing teeth of insidious shipworms, or even drag them across the land itself to shorten their journeys or outflank their foes. Yet the ship's frames, lighter than one might expect, bound to the hull with a fascinating flexibility. It seems that in the minds of these seasoned seafarers, a pliant ship was a drier ship, its very flexibility bestowing upon it a heightened seaworthiness enabling it to withstand the most tempestuous of seas. And so, trust in their vessel grew, weaving an intricate connection between speed and flexibility. It all starts with the shipwright's intimate knowledge of their materials at hand. Wood, a natural organic cellular solid, boasts a consistent cell wall structure across diverse species and can be classified into three types. Coniferous, like pine, 
ring porous deciduous, such as oak, ash, and elm, and diffuse porous deciduous, like beech. As the Viking Age dawned, the mighty oak stood tall, occupying a revered place in Viking hearts, symbolizing unyielding strength and a divine bond to Thor, the god of thunder. But to shipwrights, green oak emerged as the unrivaled choice for longship construction due to its unparalleled durability and remarkable workability. A staggering amount of labor was needed to gather the prodigious 2,000 cubic feet of oak needed for a single 65-foot vessel. No fewer than 11 formidable tree trunks had to be felled, and as the once abundant old-growth oak groves dwindled or lay far from the shipyards, resourceful Norsemen turned to the resilient pine. Radial splitting, a painstaking process requiring the finest timber, was employed for oak. The tree trunk's length determined plank length, while the grain's quality dictated the number of planks yielded. In contrast, a pine log, split in twain, produced a meager two planks per tree, a far cry from the eight or even sixteen planks reaped from a single high-quality oak. Otherwise, the wood may break during construction or worse, during real-life use, was a high possibility. To assess the strength of wood in bending, we look to the ultimate stress endured by the outermost fibers as the beam capitulates to a devastating bending load. So methodically, craftsmen slowly birthed a Viking ship, beginning by expertly carving the early iterations of the now iconic V-shaped hull. Nearly perpendicular to the cutwater, observe the elegant bows as they rise, with no unnecessary overhang of the waterline. As the angled strakes approach the garboard strake, the hull's sides are fastened together, creating a formidable structure that dances with the waves. Each plank is carved with utmost precision, cleaved to create strakes about 25 millimeters thick, with nearly imperceptible grain deviation. Envision the planks, overlapping by 25 to 30 millimeters, held together by iron rivets. And as the planks curve towards the bow and stern, the rivets are placed closer together, with thinner, narrower planks used to achieve the necessary twists and bends. Advanced shipbuilders even harnessed the power of naturally curved trees, known as reaction wood, for the forward planks. As the vessel takes form, each strake is shaped in relation to the one before it. The boat builder artfully manipulates the angle and width of each strake at key points to sculpt the hull. This hull shaping mastery relies on the design of the keel and stems as well as the transverse sections defined by the plank's breadth and angle at crucial positions along the hull's length. Knees, the crucial sinewy lower backbone of ancient ships where strength was paramount, were meticulously hewn from branches with the perfect curvature or source from the sacred junction where branch and root intertwine with the main stem. The reasoning is more than simple elegance. By carving the knees in harmony with the grain, the indomitable spirit, and strength of the wood remains unbroken. The ribs, the upper supporting structures of the hull, stretch out and downward from the gunnels. Resembling human ribs in both form and function, they anchor the ship's outer planking and inner sheathing. Nestled between the ribs of the ship, oars protrude through openings along its sides, propelling the vessel close to coastlines, within rivers, or against unfavorable winds. As the crew rowed, shields adorned the rails, offering protection and a fearsome visage. Hooks for oars to latch onto could also be used when no holes were available with loops of rope holding the oars securely in place. Wooden discs sealed the oar holes to prevent seawater intrusion when not in use. The mighty mast of a Viking ship was upheld by a large wooden mast step known as the curling. Semicircular and crafted from resilient oak, the curling spans an impressive 700 millimeters wide and up to 6 meters long in larger vessels. It tapers into a joint with the internal keelson, resting upon two formidable frames that stretch widthwise above the keel at the boat's heart. Accompanying the curling is the mast fish, a stout wooden timber situated just below deck height, lending additional support to the mast's steadfast stance. This three-meter-long beam, featuring a 1.4-meter slot facing aft, served as a mechanism to catch and secure the mast before stays were fastened. Typically, masts were half the length of the ship, preventing any overhang when unstepped. The low freeboard and open deck, unencumbered by weighty superstructures, reduced windage, thwarting the wind's attempts to push the ship sideways. The clinker technique fortified the hull's strength and flexibility, ensuring consistently bent planks, 
with uniform rates of expansion and contraction in water. Each overlap in the hull was meticulously filled with materials like wool, animal hair, and hemp soaked in pine tar. Evidence suggests that small-scale tar production techniques waterproofed ships as early as 100 to 400 AD. By the late 600s and early 900s AD, enormous tar pits could produce up to 300 liters of tar at once. After initial caulking, the entire hull was coated in this mixture, allowed time to dry and set, thereby forging a watertight seal against even the most tempestuous storms. In storms, steering is vital, and the groundbreaking Kavalsun ship, an ancient Viking marvel, displayed one of the first instances of the Viking rudder. By the 10th century, the side rudder, or steerboard, had become a staple in shipbuilding. The steerboard was a lengthy timber, approximately 7 feet 10 inches long, with a rounded upper section and a lower blade. The Gokstad ship, showcased in Oslo's Viking Ship Museum, features a steerboard with a flat inboard section and a maximum width of around 3 inches at the foil's center. The rudder shaft displayed two square holes for inserting the tiller and shaft. In shallow waters, adjustments to the tiller and blade rope allowed the rudder head to be raised. The Gokstad ship of 890 AD stands as an extraordinary testament to the shipwright's expertise in crafting such vessels. Picture in your mind's eye the image of a majestic Viking longship, its single mast supporting a sail that billows like a powerful wing, slicing through the open sea, though they still clung to the stealth of their oars. The Vikings gradually harnessed the energy of the sail, unleashing relentless raids throughout Europe during the Viking Age, beginning in the 8th century. This pivotal moment in sailing technology coincided with a time of great turbulence in early Scandinavia. Ambitious kings, hungry for wealth and unwavering devotion, saw the seaworthy sailing longships as both a potent symbol of their authority and an instrument of conquest. These initial sails started with narrow bands of coarse wool, were stitched together, hoisted high upon a horizontal yard and manipulated with ropes to snatch the winds from varying angles. Though no actual longship sails have survived the ages, historical accounts paint a picture of their imposing square shape, stretching an impressive 35 to 40 feet across. Woven on warp-weighted looms, using an array of twill patterns, this adaptable material helped the Vikings redefine sea voyages. Propelled by the wind, Viking longships covered vast distances at staggering speeds, adapting to the capricious whims of the elements. A myriad of factors such as sail size, curvature, wind angle and force and sail material all contributed to the legendary performance of these square sails. Meanwhile, elaborate carvings hint at additional enhancements like interwoven strips of walrus hide, which fortified and preserved the sail's shape even amidst the most brutal conditions. And so, as the tides of time relentlessly surge forth, we stand on the shores of history, looking back in awe at the fierce, iconic vessels that once ruled the tempestuous seas. The Viking Longship These were not simply a mode of transportation nor mere instruments of war. It was the heart, soul, and sinew of a culture that left an indelible mark on the annals of time. Thank you for watching the video.